14 tell it to Jesus if you're able please stand as we sing all four stanzas tell it to Jesus Yeah. 
prayer. Lord, we thank you again just for, uh, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love. Lord, we thank you so much again just for blessing us with a church home. Pray, Lord, that you just uh, bless this uh, time that we have together. Be with Pastor tonight as he preach your word. And pray, Lord, that you uh, be with our time of fellowships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Wednesday night, amen, invite him here at uh, Grove this evening in the Lord's house, uh, man, we had a good time with uh, Sister Smith this past uh, this past Sunday, we're uh, glad that she came, was able to uh, present her burden to us, and uh, glad of what the Lord's called her to do, and uh, already speaking the uh, language, man, that's a big, that's a big, uh, that's a big deal, and it's a big uh, investment too, did you hear all that stuff about language school? None of that's cheap, and none of that's quick. It takes a long time, and uh, a lot of investment into that. And I praise the Lord for somebody willing to invest the time and the money into uh, being able to communicate with people. Uh, it's very important, being able to communicate with folks you're trying to reach. So uh, I'm glad she's doing that, and looking forward to meeting all of our other missionaries coming next Sunday. Buddy, we got a whole crew coming in. We got uh, this Sunday, of course, we got the Lord's Supper and the evening service. Then we got Brother David, I don't know if it's pronounced Kennedy or Kanadi or I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name, but he is one of the directors of the mission board, Baptist World Missions, that Sister Smith is out of and that Brother Robinson Grayso just got approved to go through since, uh, he, since we shut down that portion of our mission board here. And so uh, he's going to be here Sunday morning. I don't, he's not going to be preaching. He's just going to say a few words to us, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from him. They got a big uh, convention, something down at Southland Christian Camp this next week. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Well, the week of the 21st, so uh, we'll keep them in prayer. Also, speaking of Southland, uh, we go, you can go ahead if you want to. Uh, we've got our teens and our young people all going the same week. It's one of those combined junior and teen weeks. I'm going to tell you the date. June the 24th through the 29th. I'm going to write that down because I will absolutely forget. June the 24th through the 29th is the Southland Christian Camp you know, weeks there that we are going. So I want to uh, make sure you know about that. <clears throat> and uh, go ahead and get registered for that if you're planning on going or some of you children are planning on going. Man, we may even have a young person or two willing to go down and be a sponsor by that time, or maybe an older person or two. I know Brother Kenny's gone down as a sponsor before, and so uh, let us know if that's something you'd like for us to do, or uh, you can let Preacher or Pastor Billings know if that's something that uh, you'd like to be involved in. All right, so I want to mention that. And then uh, we've got Brother Marlon Peterson coming on the 28th. Uh, he'll be here to Uganda. And then we also have Brother Grayso coming on the 28th. He'll be in. Brother Robinson Grace will be in, and then we have one more coming in, but I can't remember him for the life of me. We've got three missionaries. Oh, that's right, Brother Tate is coming in. Uh, I forget where he's to, but he's coming in. So we've got three missionaries on the 28th. Got a lot of missionaries coming in. We're excited about that. Uh, praise the Lord, Sister Bluto's surgery went well today. Heard from uh, Brother Bluto today, so that was a blessing. Glad her surgery went well. Sister Stephanie Rohde contacted me and said, please be in prayer for Alina, having to take her to the emergency room. Looks like her hip may be uh, completely out of socket, but they're not 100% sure. So uh, let's uh, keep uh, Alina and the Rohdes in your prayers as well. The Lord will be with them. Let's continue to pray for Shady Grove as uh, Pastor Billings uh, prepares to move down and <clears throat> goes through the transition of uh, moving out from Indiana and moving down here to Bozier City, Louisiana. So remember uh, remember them in prayer as well. What else do we have this evening, church? Yes, sir, Brother Al? Remember our great-granddaughter, Cameron? She uh, She's in the hospital. She has some type of virus. Okay. And uh, she's running a high fever, so please pray for her, Cameron. What else do we have this evening, Brother Tim? Just one question first. Did you just hear how it went when he told his church, Pastor? Uh, he said it went uh, very well. Better than he thought it. Much better than he thought it would. It went very good. Yeah. Okay. And also, the, I'm going down for mentor day, and I'm also going to meet with another young boy that's been writing me. So. Amen. And I actually got in contact with his pastor. So and Amen. they're down there from, I don't know, somewhere down there. So that's great. I Amen. had a tough time understanding him talking. But, okay. And All then, right. And then... 
Sunday week, I'll be going to both of them. Oh, wow. Sunday. So man. that's going to be good to go Bogart in the morning and Minden. But we had a good meeting Sunday. so we'll Hey, really man. Well. Yes. That's a blessing. Camp Springs. All right, what else do we have, folks? Yes, ma'am, Sister Lauren? Um, for Christine Katz, um, her face is healing from the fractures, and I can't imagine the pain in your face of healing. Um, but prayers for her and healing, I, I can't imagine, uh, along with the other health issues, continue prayers for them. Um, and still blessings that um, Darren still has a job, a new job. I um, can't think of it, it was at Lowe's, Lowe's or Home Depot. Amen. But uh, also prayers for Gene for a job when he does move here in four and a half weeks. You know, school will be out in four and a half weeks. You know, everything's going to happen. It's going to be great. Amen. Um, but prayers for a job for him here. Amen. Um, also prayers for, he's on the road right now on a little side quest. Um, and just prayers for him. He'll be driving and it's just like a side job opportunity that came open. Okay. And he'll be back early in the morning. It's a long drive. But uh, just this, just something to try to pray and hand over my worries. Yep. <coughs> All right, what else do we have? Brother Keith? Um, just continue praying for my aunt, uh, the passing of her <coughs> father. And, and also uh, my father-in-law, um, they had to rush into the hospital. His blood sugar uh, was elevated. So Jay went down to get him, uh, to bring him back up here, but she had to rush him to the hospital because his blood sugar was elevated. So mm -hmm. he's still in the hospital right now. So. It, he's doing better. They got it down a little bit, but still just a little bit too high. But uh, they got it down. So they just give us wisdom on, on when we bring them back up here, uh, how to take care of them and those things. And that what was the first one, Brother Keith. I'm sorry. My aunt. Your aunt. That was it. Yeah. Her, passing I, of her father. Absolutely. I remember Brother Keith's aunt. What else do we have today, folks? Yes, Mama Green. Um. I called Miss Molly and she said uh, her daughter Julia is back in the hospital. Yeah. Let's pray for the gullages. Yes, sir, Brother Al. I remember Sister Wanda, she's battling uh, high blood sugar and can't, get, can't find a doctor for help get it under control. Her blood sugar's too high? Yeah, 300 and some. So, so she's, uh, we were visit with her today, Linda and I did, so please pray. With his hip, yeah. Anything else this evening? Yes, ma'am, Miss Skyler. You know, and Kenny T will be leaving in July, and she helps with the 35 year old every Sunday morning, either Sunday school or church, and that God will um, touch someone's heart to help fill that position and work with Miss <coughs> in that class. Miss who? With, she'll work with Vicki Tech Okay. Whoever mm -hmm. comes forward, whoever God has chosen <laughs> to help them. Right, there's a serve opportunity right there. A lady wants to work with three to five year olds. They never pick their nose. They always wash their hands after every bathroom visit. They will not sneeze in your face. None of that. Yes, my brother. Um, I got some family issues going on right now. I don't want to sure. really say exactly what, but just pray for my family. What's your name one more time, Brother? Noah. Brother Noah. 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 Brother Noah's family. All right. <clears throat> I saw another hand back there, Mama Kate. Uh, we were at the eye doctor today with Danny, and his amblyopia, for some reason, is getting worse. So we have to see a specialist, worst-case scenario surgery. Mm. But right now we're going to we have to patch in again and do some exercises until we can get in. It's always kind of tricky, too, going through the base. Um, and the hoops you have to jump through. I've heard. And it's a nightmare. I remember that, Brother Kelvin. Well, please be a prayer for my, um, my in-laws. My mother-in-law, she had her toe, an infection in her toe. She had the uh, toe cleaned out. Mm -hmm. uh, my father-in-law uh, was on a ladder and fell <coughs> and broke his wrist. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a uh, prayer for recovery with him. And also, uh, please be a prayer for the uh, the uh, nursing home, uh, Colonial Oaks. Uh, they they lost uh, another patron. Um, let's pray for the staff because uh, I think the past 
few months. This is, uh, I think, the third passing they've had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it could be pretty stressful for them. Sure. Thank you, Brother Kelly. Well, I saw more hands, I know. Yes, sir, Brother Bill. Uh, pray for my daughter. Kelly, she's not doing that great. Uh, pray for my wife. She's got a, another health issue. I don't know a whole lot about what's going on. We haven't necessarily gotten to have that in-depth conversation with the doctor. So I'm going to say a whole lot. I mean, she's got another health issue going on. Uh, we need her. I appreciate it. And my father-in-law. All right, what else do we have? Yes, ma'am, Sister Nicole. Um, remember um, Vanessa and Delmar, they um, have a lot going on right now. Just remember Vanessa and Delmar Jr. Absolutely. What else? Is that everybody? Just remember, yes, ma'am. My brother-in-law, Johnny Reisinger, mm -hmm. he... Uh, you know, my sister passed away back in November, and it's still very, very hard on me. Absolutely. Just keep Brother Cloud in our prayers. Brother Cloud with the job stuff and everything going on there. Remember him in prayer. Y'all keep, everybody's everybody's praying multiple times a day for my house to sell, right? <laughs> Amen. Keep it up. Every meal, man. Or oh, bless, bless these pop tarts. And please fill Pastor's house to sell. <laughs> Amen. Pop tarts. That's breakfast. What's uh, lunch? Is uh, hang on. Lunch. Lord, please bless the spam sandwich. In Jesus' name. And Lay's chips. And then uh, dinner would be. What is it? Uh, are we talking Cheerios or Frosted Flakes? Honey Nut Cheerios. That's it right there. That's a diet right there, buddy. What do you think, Miss Ann? That's a good one. <laughs> Miss Ann tries to help me stay healthy, bless her heart. It's been an uphill battle. She's... <laughs> All right. We ready to pray, everybody? Anything else? Brother Steve? Can you have a on Timothy? Yeah, uh, I do. So I have a couple texts here. That's a good question. Brother Timothy. Okay, so uh, the, they, found, they found that spot outside of his abdominal cavity, which up until now they were hoping it was all inside the peritoneal area there in his abdomen. But then they found a, a big spot outside uh, right next to his spine, in between his spine and his aorta. And so... Uh, in the lymph node back there. So that means it looks like it's in his lymph sy lymphatic system and it's outside his stomach. So that those are really bad. And then the location's bad too. So normally they wouldn't even be able to do surgery on it apparently. Uh, doctors recommended uh, that he uh, keep doing his chemo and then also add something else on cytotoxic something. So I'm not 100% sure what all that means. And then he's supposed to have an appointment with the oncologist uh, Thursday. I guess that would be tomorrow. And then they would start another four rounds or four more chemotherapies. So that's all they know right now, as far as I know. There's just going to be more chemo and the cancer's more. That's all I know. Anything else? All right. Well, let's spend some time praying over these then. Father, we thank you for this day and for your goodness and thank you for taking care of us and blessing us. Thank you for salvation, Lord. I'm glad I'm going to heaven, Lord, and I'm glad that this world is not my home, especially with what it's coming to nowadays. Father, I pray that you would be with your people. Father, we want to uh, we want to live our lives down here the way that we know you want us to live, and that's being lights for you and sharing people, sharing with people the love of Jesus Christ everywhere we go and the truth from your word. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to be a faithful uh, follower of Jesus, help me to be a faithful Christian, and help me to get your word around to those that I'm around every day. Lord, I want to pray for Sister Blue Toe and her recovery from her surgery. Just keep your hands upon them and bless them. Father, we pray for Sister Stephanie and Alina, Lord, as they're in the emergency room. Pray that you just be with that little baby girl. 
know it's so hard watching our uh, children suffer, Father, with uh, illnesses that can cripple them and keep them from being able to get around. I pray, Father, that you would just be with these children uh, that are hurting. Father, that you would give the doctors wisdom, that you give the parents wisdom, Father, and uh, help them to be there for them, to keep them strong. And, Father, also pray for our pastor, Pastor Billings, Lord. Just be with him and the church up there as he continues his transition time, that you just watch over him and take care of him and Sister Lori. We're excited about him coming, Father. We're blessed. We're blessed that you sent him to us, and we just want to thank you. We've been praying for a new pastor, Father, and you answered. So we want to say thank you for that, Lord. Father, we do pray also uh, uh, for uh, Cameron in the hospital, Lord. Just uh, please be with that situation. Uh, Father, we pray for all these uh, uh, camps that are Brother Tim's in and preaching, Lord, that you just give him strength and wisdom, help him to continue to preach those, Father, to share your gospel, and pray that you change the hearts and lives of young people across Louisiana. Father, I also pray for Sister Christine Katz, Lord, just be with her and Brother Darren. I don't know all the situation and the various trials going on, but on top of everything, she just got in a car wreck, and I know that that can be very stressful. Just be with them and watch over them, Lord, we pray. Father, I pray for Gene and that you'd be with him and give him a good job, Father, and as he's working to take care of his wife and his son. I pray for Sister Lauren, Lord, that you just continue to give her grace as she uh, uh, continues to move forward. And it, as this transition with everything going on with the family and how you're moving and working, I pray that you just continue to be with her and Gabriel and work things out for them. Father, I do pray for Brother Keith Green's in-laws. I know his uh, wife's father's in bad shape. Father, just please be with him and help him and be with his aunt as well. And pray for Miss Molly and Brother Jim and their health issues and their daughter Julia, Father. Lord, I pray for Mama Wanda with her blood sugar spiking and uh, Brother Hank with his hip problems. Father, I'm telling you, we just got a long, long list of stuff here, Father, to fret over and worry about if we let it. Father, I pray, Lord, that you just work in every situation. Pray for Miss Skyla, Father. Thank you for her faithful uh, work and overseeing that nursery wing, Lord, and for uh, sending uh, uh, Lakia and Latoya to come and help uh, take over that, uh, that specifically that nursery area. Father, I pray that you just give them wisdom. Father, we're thankful for Sister Infinity launching out. Father, do something for you and go overseas and serve in a scary part of the world, especially right now. Thank you for letting her uh, have the courage and the strength to go do that and to forsake all this, all the luxury that we have over here and live on $7,000 for an entire year over in a country where she don't, don't know anybody and has no friends or family. Father, just be with her, I pray, and keep her safe. Father, I pray that you'd send the right person to that three- to five-year-old class uh, to deal with those children sneezing in their face and coughing all over them and throwing up on people's shoes on occasion and forgetting to wash their hands and spreading germs. And Father, I pray that you'd just be with um, uh, be with that person that you're touching right now about talking to Miss Skyler to work in that position be a blessing to our children and help mold our next generation. Because, Father, a couple more days and all of us in here are gone. It'll be those children over in that next building. And, Father, if we don't treat them right, if we don't respect them, and if we don't put them in the uh, training and, uh, and the love and uh, example that we're supposed to be to them, Father, we, 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 we're done. I pray that you'd help us to remember that, Father, our lives are just like a smoke, just a vapor, Father, is here for a little while and then goes away. Pray for Brother Noah, Father. It's been a blessing to have him coming with us here at church on Wednesday nights. He's been coming, Father, and other times. Just touch him and strengthen him, be with his family and the situations there. I pray, Father, for Danny and with his eyesight and his vision there, whatever's going on, that you just give them wisdom as they uh, navigate the base and everything that needs to go on there. Pray for Brother Kelvin's in-laws. The, the fall off the ladder and something with the toe and all these different things. Lord, just be with them. Pray for the staff over at Colonial Oaks. And I pray for all of our medical staff that work here at the church. we got so many of them that do. Or watch people die all the time and get cussed at and vomited on and urinated on, Father, and just keep on going back and are a, a, a blessing and love on people and show them Jesus' love. I pray, Father, that you'd be with all of our medical staff, Father, that are working in the hospitals, that you'd give them strength and wisdom as they do that. Father, I pray for Brother Bill, Lord, 
Lord, with his wife's health. And Kelly, Lord, that you just be with him and his father-in-law. Pray for Vanessa and Delmar Jr. and their family that you be with them. Pray for Johnny Reisinger, Father, that you'd uh, uh, continue to give him uh, comfort and safety, Father, and give him uh, health, we pray. And Father, I pray that you would uh, help that house on Audubon to sell according to your will and in your time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Brother Don, come on. Amen. We're going to continue singing hymn number 170. Hymn 170, Anywhere with Jesus. If you're able, please stand as we sing all four stanzas. Anywhere with Jesus. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without him clear as joys would fade. Anywhere with Jesus I am not a breakfast we got this uh, Saturday at 8 o'clock. Come on out. We'll have some uh, fellowship and some food. Time to get together. And after that, after we do that, we're going to set up for uh, Brother Jerry Green for his family coming over. And uh, he had a, a family member that passed away. So be in prayer for them, the Green Green family. Brother Isaac, you mind praying? Amen. sing for us at this time. Remember uh, if you want to sign, sign up for Faith Bible Institute, still time to sign up. Got to get it done before April. That's the election. Oh, that's the election. The election. The election. April 28th. April 28th. Well, I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> Amen. Oh, goodness. 
The drunk on the street, the rich in their palaces, the poor and unlearned, and men of degree, they all have a soul in need of salvation, and they all have to come by Calvary. I am so glad God saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how he sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he could save an old sinner like me. Was I so bad that I needed forgiveness? And was I so wrong I had to be redeemed? Well, I wasn't a thief, yet I lived in sin's prison, so I was as wrong as a sinner could be. I am so glad God saves those sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed. How he sets them free, but the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that he could save an old sinner like me, is that he could save an old sinner like me. right there. All right, we're over in uh, the book of Kings, going through the Bible. I think we're getting close to the end of the book of 1 Kings. We, you know, I don't know. I say that, but you never know. We could get stuck on one verse for weeks, so it's hard telling. We're over in 1 Kings chapter number 18. If you all remember with me, the kingdom of Israel is going through a time of uh, famine right now, and Elijah has been fed a couple different ways. Very unorthodox. One of them uh, was uh, he was getting um, uh, Whopper Juniors delivered to him by uh, ravens in the morning and then in the evening. And then there was a, uh, the widow Douglas was taking care of him uh, during, uh, with her young man, with her young boy, uh, during the second portion of uh, the time when he needed help of this famine. And uh, then uh, the Lord uh, took, then her son died, and Elijah brought him back to life, for the Lord used him to. So a lot of big things have been happening during this time of famine, which is something we should learn in our lives, by the way. Sometimes the Lord's got a lot of stuff going on for you during some of your hardest times. And you say, well, uh, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, not only did the entire kingdom of Israel not have any rain, but Elijah didn't either. You got to remember that Elijah's going through this just like everybody else is. And during this time, he's been able to watch God do incredible miracles daily. I mean, these ravens bringing food morning and evening, that's big time. You don't get to see that all the time. I mean, that, that, that's, that's really unbelievable right there. That's serious when a raven <laughs> drops down out of the sky and drops some bread there on you. I mean, that's big time. And so uh, uh, bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. Got some meat and bread, dropping it there, giving it to you. And so uh, until the brook dried up, and then the Lord took him from there and took him to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon. And there was a widow woman that the Lord had already talked to about feeding him. 
and uh, he was able to watch the uh, the meal the meal in the barrel and the oil in the cruise continue to last you know day after day month after month yeah I mean every time Elijah put food in his, into his mouth it was him enjoying God's divine intervention to be able to keep him and the folks he was with from going hungry. And then he got to watch this young man get his life back after dying. And all that happened during a dry spell in his life. So if you're here in a dry spell this evening, and it's been a while since you've enjoyed some rain, it could be that the Lord's got some real miracles he wants you to see. Could be he's really got some serious stuff that he wants to show you. It could be that during this time of your life when you feel like you're at your weakest, maybe, just maybe, the Lord's strength will be made perfect during that time. When you're at your smallest, when you're at your lowest, when you're at your most discouraged, maybe it's time for the Lord to show you what he has got planned for you. So don't be discouraged. Look around and see what God's trying to teach you. Chapter 18, we started off looking at uh, uh, Elijah coming back to talk to Ahab. And in verse number three, you've got Obadiah, the governor of his house, of Ahab's house, a very, very powerful figure there in this administration. And the Bible said he feared the Lord greatly. So we talked about how God has his Christians spread out everywhere. It would surprise us to know where good Christian people are that really serve the Lord and that really fear God and really spend time uh, praying to Him and serving Him. Son, half of us don't even spend time praying to Him. And we're sitting on church pews. God's got people, uh, God's got people in all kinds of positions that are spending time with the Lord and really wanting Him to speak to them and really looking into the Word of God and really not only, uh, not only talking like they're being a Christian, but actually acting like it and doing it. And you say, well, what was Obadiah doing? Well, he was feeding 100 prophets a day. 50 in this one, 50 in the other one. And it was secret. And I don't know who was footing the bill, but it was probably himself. And that's a lot of men. And we did the math last time. That's a lot of your personal money being invested into something like this. So Obadiah was a blessing. He put his money where his mouth was, and he served the Lord. And uh, he was a, a very good, obviously, he was a very good employee. Ahab trusted him to do this job of going around the land and looking for water to be able to save some of the animals. And then as he's going around, Elijah met him. And he talked to Elijah for a while, and Elijah's like, I want you to go tell Ahab I'm here. And he said, I ain't going nowhere, because God's going to take you up somewhere, and then I'll be the one liable for saying, here's Elijah, and then there you're not, and I'm, I'll endanger my life, because I ain't going nowhere, buddy. I mean, I appreciate what you're doing. I'm glad you're a prophet and everything, but unless I have some serious assurances, I'm not going anywhere. And Elijah told him, uh, the Bible says here, uh, uh, that Elijah gave him his word, and we're going to read a couple of these verses here uh, before we get started this evening. Elijah gave him his word that he would be there. So let's stand with me, and let's read right here in verse number 11, and uh, we'll start and read a couple verses and see how the Lord leads us this evening. And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whether I know not. And so when I come and tell... Uh, Ahab, and he cannot find me, he shall slay me, but thy servant, uh, but of thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? <clears throat> and now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth. That's pretty serious right there. Before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah well, went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. Please bless our time together over the word of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Again, I've uh, preached on this before, but I love how Elijah references the Lord here and says, I stand before him, before whom I stand. I stand before the Lord. That's uh, just a good reminder. A lot of us need to remember who we're standing in front of. We're standing, 
We're not standing in front of. Uh, uh, we're not standing in front of anybody trying to get their opinion on us, except for the Lord. We're looking for the Lord to guide us. We're looking for the Lord to look over us. We're looking for the Lord to search our hearts and to try us. And we want to remember that we're standing before Him, not the court of public opinion, not what the convention of all the Baptists say, not what the big boys have to say about us, not what Facebook thinks about us, not what TikTok has to say. But I stand before the Lord. And that, that means I'm, I'm setting aside all of the pressure that I feel from my peers. You know, I was wondering about that. It, it's almost a conflict of terms there. Peer pressure. I'm glad it's not friend pressure because then it really would be a conflict of terms. Because if it's somebody I want to hang around, if it's a friend of mine, it's somebody I want to spend time with, why are they pressuring me to be anything other than the person that I feel God wants me to be? Can we answer that one for me? Why are they pressuring me to disobey my parents? Why are they pressuring me uh, uh, to really open it up and show us what this vehicle's got out on the highway somewhere and to break the law? Why are they pressuring me to get involved with the activities they're involved in? If they're a friend, would they not be encouraging me to be what well, I feel the Lord wants me to be. That's what a friend would do. So peer pressure, I hate that because that simply means that you better look over, you better watch the kind of people you're around because if they're pressuring you to be anything other than what God wants you to be, it's time for you to change your environment. Amen. Be very careful about that. Be very, very careful about that. Remember who you're standing in front of. You're not standing in front of anybody but the Lord if you're where Elijah is. He says, I stand before the Lord. Let's keep reading. Obaniah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. So here comes Ahab. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Oh, it's you again. Oh, Mr. Troubler. Mr. Troublemaker. You're the one that's been causing us all these problems. And like a very good, meek, kind, gentle, soft-spoken Baptist pastor with years of experience, he answers, It's not me! It's you! Gets right back into his face. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. Gets right back in his face on it. Now, that ain't something I can do, but I ain't an Elijah. When somebody gets up in my face, I want to wilt down and run the other way. I'm not a big fighter that way. I, it's just not my personality. I'm like, oh, okay, calm down. It's all good. But Elijah said, I'm not troubled, Israel. That's you and your father's house. A lot of times people think that God's word, Christians in general, or preachers, or people preaching the gospel, people standing for the truth of the word of God, are the ones causing the problems, the ones causing the trouble. And that's just simply not true. The Bible says here that Elijah said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. And here's how you've done it. He, Elijah just goes the next step. When Elijah was faced with an accusatory finger from the king, Elijah looks back at him and says, No, Buster, that ain't me. That's you, the one you should be pointing the finger at. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you and your father's house have been into. You want me to bring it back on you and preach to you? I'll preach to you and your whole family. That's what Elijah says. So, yeah, he was a fire breather, buddy. I'm going to tell you what you and your whole father's house have been into. And that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and has followed Balaam. I'm going to tell you exactly what your problem is, Ahab. You and all of your fathers, y'all have taken the word of God. You've taken God's commandments and you have forsaken them. You have turned your back on the word of God. Man, it's almost like I'm reading what is happening today. What is happening in Christians, I'm talking people that claim to be saved. What they're doing today, they're taking the Bible and they're putting it behind them. They don't care what it says. They don't care what God has to say about it. They are forsaking God's way. And they're going after Balaam, which is the path all everybody else is going after. They're taking the path that everybody else is heading down. What does God have to say? Don't know. Don't care, don't care to know. 
See you at church on Sunday. So Elijah opened up and started preaching right back at him. When he got on to the preacher and said, Preacher, you're the one causing all the trouble. He said, No, I ain't that you, big boy. It's you and your family. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. Elijah wasn't the last five minutes in church here today. Son, they'd have ran that dude out quicker than anything. No wonder he was out in the wilderness for so long. I mean, even John the Baptist is who they compared to. They compared Elijah to John the Baptist. Even G, I mean, that's what the Bible did. Elijah was first son, shall first come, and then John the Baptist ministry only lasted three months. They couldn't even deal, put up with his preaching. He said, it's you and your father's house. You've forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. You've decided God's way isn't for you, and you've decided to go the way everybody else is going. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel on the Mount Carmel. I'm going to tell you what to do, King. Go ahead and get the whole crowd together. So we're going to do this nice and public. Everybody can see. I want you to go and gather all Israel, the Bible says, on the Mount Carmel. We're going to put them up on a mountain. We're going to put them up on a mountain where everybody can see and where folks can gather from miles around if they can and if they want to and have plenty of space to tuck up in close and uh, behold what God is about to do. And the prophets of Baal, 450. 450 prophets. And the prophets of the groves, 400. 850 prophets. Now look where these guys are feasting. Which eat where? At Jezebel's table. Man, oh man, Elijah ain't pulling no punches right here. I want you to go get all them little uh, so-called, mama-called, looking for money, hoping to get a next meal, uh, ear-scratching, limp-wristed prophets up here, and we're going to show them exactly what God's got to say about it. Bring them up! The Bible says that Elijah came unto all the people, I'm sorry, verse 20. Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on the Mount Carmel. Now, they were all sitting around Jezebel's table. Now, God's, God's men were hiding in caves, eating bread and water. Jezebel's table was the place to be. Now, I want to tell you this right now. If you want elevation, if you want popularity, if you want a seat at the table, if you want a seat at the big boy table in life, you're going to have to leave God behind. I'm going to tell you that right now. You are never going to make it at the big boy Jezebel table unless you leave God outside. Something, somehow, your Christianity is going to step on some big guy's toes and you will never make it to the next level. Amen, Pastor. That's exactly right. There's going to be something, something about you, something you say, uh, something about your walk with the Lord that's going to press the wrong button and you are not going to have a seat at Jezebel's table. Guess what we at Shady Grove say? Don't care, don't want it, ain't looking for an open chair. You can keep Jezebel's table. You couldn't get us there if you paid us to come. We'll come in there and give everybody a gospel track and tell them if they don't get saved, they're going to splow wide open. That's what we'll tell them. They can keep their Jezebelian table. Son, we'll go out and hang in the caves with the prophets and eat a Big Mac. (laughs) Amen. Ain't looking to get at Jezebel's table. Don't care about an empty seat at Jezebel's table. Don't need the popularity. Don't need to be in the palace. Don't have to be at the. Uh, uh, don't have to be uh, courted, and don't have to be. Uh, don't have to play all the games just right, and make all the maneuvers just right in order to move up and elevate ourselves to get up at Jezebel's table. So, as we continue to read, Ahab went and did it in verse twenty sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on the Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, Now this is a good one right here. How long halt ye between two opinions? 
Now there's two now there's two positions here, folks. There's God's way and there's the not God's way. Now notice the question. I love this. It's now watch this shady grove. It's not how long you're gonna go the wrong way. Watch what he asks. What's the question? Not how long how long's it gonna be till y'all repent and get off that wicked path? Is that what he said? Mm -mm. What's the question? How long halt ye between two opinions? Now you say, well, well, what's the definition of halt? That's a really strange word. Well, if, if you're walking along and someone goes, halt, what do you do? Halt means stop. It means to bring to a complete stop. There's a lot of Christians that are halted between two opinions. Now, there's nothing greater than being able to kick the can of decision-making down the road. Amen right there? There's nothing greater, is there? Isn't that just wonderful? Let me chew on it. I'm, a, I'm, I'm starting to pull that out of the bag more often as they get older. Just give me a couple days, or let me chew on that, or I'll, get back with me in a week or two, is what I was like. Dude, I don't want to answer that. A lot of us Christians are become professionals at kicking a can down the road before we stand up and make a decision. Now, you name it, whatever it is, whatever the decision is. Dad, we going to church on Sunday? I don't know. Ask me later. Ask me Sunday morning. We'll see. Kicking a can down the road. Dad, so are we going to, or Mom, are we going to do this? Or Dad, are we going to do this? Or uh, Honey, are we going to, well, I'll get, I'll get to it one of these days and get around to it. You know what that is? It's a professional kicking a can down the road. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, what, what is the Lord, uh, what's our opinion? Where do we stand on this? Well, when do I have to make the decision? Well, this day, though, okay, well, ask me two seconds before that. We're pros at that, man. And, uh, and Elijah's asking you and me, you and me, both of us right here, right now, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? How long are you going to stand there frozen in the road before you either stand up and say, I'm on God's side or I'm not on God's side? See, a lot of us Christians, we're really good at that. We come to church and we really don't take much of a stand. We just kind of go with the... And we just do the best we can to float along through life without having to take a stand on anything. And Elijah's asking you, my brother, and you, my sister, and me today, how long are you going to halt between two opinions? Say, what's so scary about making a decision? Well, you tell me. That decision that God's put in your heart right now that you're trying to make, excuse me, that you're trying to not make, what's so scary? Why is it scaring you? What's so scary about it? What's bothering you about it? Remember the Pharisees when Jesus asked them, uh, well, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of man? A or B, in or out, up or down, right or left. You know what they step aside and discussed? Not the veracity of whether it was of God or not, but what the outcome would be. If we say it's of God, then I'll say, why did you not believe him? But if we say if it's of, of, of man, then all the people will stone us because they thought he was from God. So here's what we'll say. We don't know. In other words, I'm staying right in the middle between the two opinions because I don't want to suffer the consequences or put myself in any camp. A lot of people do that with doctrinal issues. A lot of people do that about the Bible, the King James Bible. So we ain't halting between two opinions on that. I'm solid that the King James Bible is the word of God preserved in English for you and me. Solid on that. Don't care. I ain't going to get a seat a lot of tables because of that. Guess what? Don't care. Solid on that. I'm solid on things the Bible says. I'm, I'm trying to be, and I want to be solid on things this Bible teaches. I don't want to halt between two opinions on any of that. A lot of times my kids will come, especially now that they're all teenagers. Can y'all believe that? Girls just turned 13. Goodness gracious. All my kids are teenagers. So uh, as they'll come to me with a question, I'll do the same thing. Well, uh, uh, give Pop a couple days to chew on that. 
In my mind, I'm going, well, for this and that, and what about him? Going through the whole shebang, and how is it all going to play out? How long will you halt between two opinions? I want you to ask yourself that, brother or sister here this evening. How long are you going to halt between two opinions? The Bible says, <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, um, uh, let's see, where are we? 21. How long? And, and that's the question. About how, many, how many days? How many months? A lot of you have been sitting there in the, valley of, in the valley of decision. The Bible says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. A lot of y'all been sitting there for, first you thought you were just going to hang out for days. Then it turned into weeks. And then it's months. And now you've been there for years. And now you set up a camp and everything. And you still haven't decided. You're still just playing it the best you can in the middle of the road instead of coming out and saying, choose ye this day whom you will serve. And say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going God's route. Or I'm not going God's route. A lot of us just kind of go with the flow the best we can to try to make it the best we can with what we got instead of standing up and say making a decision on whether or not we're going to serve the Lord and go his way or not. And the people answered him. And once again, verse 21, how did the people answer him? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if they all, then follow him. And the people answered him what? Blink, 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 blink. That's all they said. It was blink, blink, blink. No answer still. That's the exact answer you want to hear from somebody when you're talking about a relationship and seeing if it's going to get serious or not. So where do you see this thing going in three years? Do you think maybe the uh, Lord's working this out to bring us together? Or is it, uh, where do you see this going? That's the last thing you want to see. So they decided not to answer a word. And the Bible says here, let's look at this. And Elijah said unto the people, I even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. I'm not sure how he got that number there because he, even he only wasn't the only prophet of the Lord. There was a whole slew of them, but they weren't there. They may not have been present, so maybe he's talking about the ones present and accounted for. 450 men, let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. Call you on the name of, the, of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Now there's been a drought for years now. So you'd think if one of those, if, 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 I mean, if someone just, you know, stepped wrong, it'd spark a fire. So he gave them the most, the, the, the most easiest possible thing. Just start a fire under this wood. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock. Uh, I think I've read that. Choose you one bullock and dress it first. And they put, no, there it is, 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. So from morning till noon. Nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. Goodness gracious, they're leaping on the altar. They want to combust into flames. And Elijah's over there, you know, kicked back like this. And again, another difference between me and Elijah. First of all, Elijah gets right back in somebody's face that gets up in his. That's not me. Secondly, he sits back in verse 27, and he starts mocking them. And it takes all kinds, son. And it came to pass at noon, Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Y'all go ahead, keep it up over there. I'm sure your God's just ready and waiting to listen to you guys. Either he's talking or, or maybe he's in the middle of a conversation with somebody. Or maybe he's pursuing. Or maybe he's in a journey. I said he just took a quick trip down to Natchitoches. That's why he can't hear you. Or peradventure he sleepeth. Maybe he's up there sawing logs and he just can't hear you. See, I'll wake him up. They cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon the man. It's getting gruesome over there. Right. It came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. About eight or nine hours they tried their best to get fire to break out. That there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Nobody even cared. That's a sad story. They were cutting themselves and bleeding themselves out for this false god. Didn't even care. 
And Elijah said, and all the people come near unto me. Everybody come up here close. I want you to see this. I ain't trying to do no magic, no sleight of hand. I want you to see exactly what's about to happen. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. He's reminding them of their heritage. He's reminding them of their roots. He's reminding them of the relationship that they've had with God. We need that every now and then, by the way. We need somebody to remind us about who brought us out and who rescued us from Egypt and who put us on a new path and who created us and who brought us out and who has saved us and rescued us and given us the life that we have. And then in 33, he put wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid them on the, and laid them on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. He's soaking it all with precious water. He's soaking it with water. There's no way this is going to automatically combust. And he said, do it the second time. They did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. He soaked it three times. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, look at this big, long, flowery prayer right here. Y'all going to love this. It takes like 25 minutes to read his whole prayer. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. This prayer was a prayer that God would do something to show his people himself to show his people that he was there for them, that he was ready to receive them, that he was ready to rescue them, that he was ready to accept their repentance, and he was still there looking for them and turn their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Fire came down from heaven. Man, that would have been so cool to see. And consumed the burnt sacrifice in the wood. Oh, wow, the burnt sacrifice in the wood. Man, that's incredible. Oh, we're not done. And the stones. What? Yeah. Stones burn up. And, watch this, the dust. The dirt burned. I've never seen that before. And licked up the water that was in the trench. And it licked up the water. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. God answered Elijah's prayer and used this to show them the true path. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord is the God, the Lord is the God. And Elijah said to them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Elijah killed all those prophets. And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that when the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I don't know what all you needed to hear tonight. I don't know what you needed to see from this, whether it's God's divine power, God's answer to prayer, Elijah's patience, and God's answer to prayer, especially for the rain. The fact that the cloud that came up out of the sea looked like a man's hand is pretty cool. The fact that God gave Elijah the strength to run to Jezreel before Ahab got there on a chariot is incredible. The fact that God licked up, I mean, just every, all the miracles in this chapter. What the Lord used this to speak to me about tonight was how long haul ye between two opinions. You know, When I'm halted between two opinions, where am I going? Nowhere. 
I wonder, I wonder now, tonight, if I'd never, if every time the Lord wanted me to make a decision, if I'd have made it in his time and not kicked the can down the road, I wonder where I'd be today in my walk with the Lord. I wonder how far ahead I'd be of the game if I'd kept his pace instead of halting. Honey, get out the lawn chairs. This is a decision I'm not ready to make. Set a spell. Here we go again. Set up the tent. Hook up the RV. Go ahead and call the Wi-Fi company. We ain't going nowhere. Years go by. Because I'm halted between two opinions. Let's stand together. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity, Father, to travel this road with you. I pray that you be with your people tonight, all of us, Lord, that are uh, trying to move and grow and walk by faith, Lord. Father, those of us that are here tonight that have, that have been in park for far too long, we're not moving forward, we're not growing, we're not changing, we're not developing in our Christian walk. We've stagnated for some reason. I pray, Lord, that you would search our hearts tonight. Father, help us to not be afraid to put it back in drive and to make a decision and to stop halting. Bless your people tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Available if you need to come and pray. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, that's also a decision you don't want to halt on. You need to make your choice on that. And I encourage you to come to Jesus for salvation. He's ready and he's willing and he's very able to save you to the uttermost. Them that come unto God by him. Let Jesus do a work for you tonight. <clears throat> Lord's got a plan for you. Let's move forward and let God direct us. Go ahead and step up. Step up and make that decision. Walk out there by faith and let the Lord do some incredible stuff that you can't even imagine. Amen. All right, man, it's good to be in God's house. Thank y'all for coming this evening. I trust everybody's been reading their Bibles. Keep up, keep that up, folks. We need to be reading our Bibles. I'm over in Corinthians right now, so semi-depressing, but semi-pretty good. There's a lot of weird stuff going on at that church of Corinth. Man, I'm glad we're not like the church of Corinth, man. A lot of bad juju happening over there, but uh, so uh, uh, just keep reading your Bible. Hey, the Lord wrote it for you, amen. He wrote it for you, so read it and let him do something in your heart through it, okay? Anything else before we dismiss? Don't forget our men's uh, prayer breakfast this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock. They're putting in our floor over there in the missions homes. Looking incredible, by the way. Uh, Where uh, roof is just about wrapped up. They were over here again today. They need to make a couple of those caps up on the top and install those to try to get those uh, leaks taken care of and working through all that. But got a lot of good stuff happening. So uh, keep praying. For all these uh, uh, updates and things that we're taking care of here on the property, and just trust the Lord to guide and direct. All right, anything else? All right, uh, preacher, come on up and dismiss us in a word of prayer, please, sir. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again just for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us each and every day. Every day, every morning, Lord, is a, a new morning, Lord, a new opportunity to live for you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just help us throughout the rest of this week, Lord, to, to be a witness for you, to be able to share your word with a lost and dying world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all dismissed.